Men hvis du bare har en Gardens in front of the fire, you put into the chest of drawers, take I'll it away. I put it into the <laughs> chest of drawers and give it a bottle of uh, the stories I was told. But you don't, I don't remember much about growing up. I don't think much many people do. But my, my life as a child came to a, a sudden halt when I was put into Churchfield School. Was there many in your family, Shams? There was uh, my mum, my dad, four sisters and two brothers. Okay. And my father was in the industrial schools. Okay. And this is Churchfield before there was any Nocknahini Any Nocknahini or anything there like that. Yeah, you were the edge of the city, like? <coughs> yeah, we were. And you went into Churchfield school, primary school? Yeah. Um, I never liked it from day one. Um, there was about eight or nine kids inside in the class. We, it took a while to settle down. Um, the other kids were getting on better than I was. I found it very hard to rest in a chair when the teacher was writing sums up on the blackboard. I couldn't make them out. I couldn't, I couldn't decide between letters or numbers. I just couldn't do it. Um, looking back now, the reason that that was happening was because I was, I was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia from that age. Mm. Um, but back in those days, that wasn't common. It was, nobody knew about it. Well, that's what they're telling us, that it wasn't uh, known in, back in them days. So we were labelled as mentally retarded spastics. That's the name I was given because I had ADHD. The language is shocking, isn't it? And it was two top psychiatrists that worked in Lota that diagnosed me with them. I do remember going down there a few times to see men in white coats where I was accompanied by the probation service. Um, as I said, I remember being out in the terrace playing with kids and I got sick of seeing kids eating dirt. Mm. It was nobody's fault. Mm. The north side was a poor area. So I don't know how or where, but I started going in and out of town, stealing food, money, Chocolate, sweets, especially the fags and lighters. <gasps> like the old fags. Oh, jeez, I love me fags. <laughs> and I was bringing them back, and I just, I was just giving them to people. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about the conditions of Churchill at the time? There were corporation houses. The people, you couldn't, you couldn't buy people like this. They were neighbours. God doesn't make people like that anymore. <sighs> They all watched out, I, I often noticed, because I knew that I was different. I always knew that I was different when I was small. I started listening and paying attention to what was really going on. When the kids were playing, I was playing along, but I was watching everything that was going on in that terrace. If there was a door open or closed, I'd be into it. If there was a car in the terrace, it was just automatic, I don't know. And I kept this up for months and I started getting caught and brought to the guard station. I was given beatings, you wouldn't believe it. And I was being charged and brought to court and the guards were calling to the door. At one stage I thought there was a fucking extension out the back. And they couldn't do anything because of my age. No. What age were you back then? I was, I can't remember because mm. I remember giving my date of birth as the 27th of the 10th, 1962. And the reason I can remember that was, was because it was the girls. Every time I got caught as a child, I'd sign with an X, right? And they got fed up with that. So the girls taught me how to write my name, my address, and my date of birth. And that's how I know I always gave the right date of birth. So I was eventually 
handed over to the probation service here in Cork. They were called the welfare service at the time. Mm. And I didn't take, I didn't care. I literally didn't care who they put me in or who put in charge of me or where they put me. I had no sense of fear. And as I'm going along, you'll understand, I had no fear of anybody, girls, beatings. Um, so things got out of hand in relation to me getting out of control. I never harmed anyone, um, but I did do a lot of things in my life. But as I got worse, the situation with the girls, the probation service, the courts, they were all going crazy because I was getting away with what I was getting away with and there was no homes or any place to take me. So they eventually found an assessment centre in Finglas, St Michael's, and I was sent up there five times. Um, what was St Michael's like? <sighs> How would you describe it? Um, it, it, it detention was it? Would it you be can't a, move from this building. Yeah, you know there was about like it was a big, huge building with thirty or forty rooms. You were locked in at all times. But I soon got used to it, and I was going up and down to Cork, and I was being kept away from my parents, and they eventually left me out again. So I went back to the only thing I could do because when they got me back into school, I was with in Churchville School and the beatings got worse. Every single day I was there, the teacher drew blood out of me. I was slapped off tables. Tables were slapped off of me. I was hopped off of doors and everything. And he was a very tall, thin teacher with glasses. And he used to walk around with a cane well, well, that's how he's. And you'd see him tapping young fellas, you know, just that, and lashing her off the table. But I do remember one day I was inside in the class and somewhere in my head I had a figure of money. I know I know how to make up money. And the teacher put a, a sum up in the blackboard and he says, Kelly... Two eighteens. No, this in eighteen and eighteen there was a line and there was an X beside it, so you have to subtract and all that. Yeah. And I said out loud, Well, two twenties is forty and take four out of that. There's your answer. And he stood back and he brought the cane. I mean, this was a big man and I was a child on a table. Mm. And he went back and he brought it right across there. He says, I don't like it when pricks like you, he says, are smarter than me. You'll do that the proper way. You'll subtract and you'll do all that. And I says, I don't know how to do it. And the beatings never stopped. 